Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about some controller balance issues. And, you know, this has been a pretty big controversial topic uh, within Star Citizen for almost the entire history of the game. And it really shouldn't be. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of strip down this, uh, you know, whole debate into kind of its foundation and simplify it as much as I can. Um, so to start off, the org that I'm in does a lot of practice games where players on teams to be a cop in a free flight and just duel each other over and over. That's what you're watching here in the background, uh, me dueling some other players. Um, we mostly do it to get better, but it's also kind of, you know, it's also a lot of fun. Um, you know who you're going up against. And I really enjoy kind of the challenge of that. And, you know, I could always, of course, uh, use more practice, even though I do prefer, um, in general, kind of team-based gameplay. But... In 2.6, I kind of capped out in squad battle points pretty soon. Um, and so I started to do more of these duels. And I noticed how difficult it was for me in a in a gimbaled Super Hornet with, uh, you know, that loadout to beat, a sa to beat Saber pilots who were using fixed loadouts. And that kind of goes against the prevailing viewpoint right now among a lot of the community. Um, and it was actually, you know, something that I believe too, in that gimbal supposedly have an advantage in 2.6 over fixed because of various factors you know including lower ship speeds but the main factor and i think the crux of the issue is and how is how has always been around weapon effectiveness between sizes and that's a very important issue of uh you know the whole gimbal versus fixed controller argument in general and i'll get into this in detail but when it comes to balancing gimbals versus fixed loadouts the number one factor by far is weapon scaling so why is that when you get to the base, you know, of the advantage that a gimbaled weapon will have, uh, all else being equal, it comes down to one thing, and that's time on target. Essentially, the percentage of the time that you're able to track and hit your opponent in a fight. And it's, it's kind of a simple concept. Let's imagine for a minute we have two guns. Gun A has 10 DPS. Gun B has 20 DPS. If the target can take 100 damage before being destroyed, Gun B will win. It will take 5 seconds instead of 10. But if gun B can only hit 50% of its shots, we have a tie. You know, with 50% time on target, its DPS is effectively split in half. Split in half. Now, that ignores things like heat and power consumption um, that you're going to have in Star Citizen. But it's effective DPS that we're talking about here, along with, you know, effective time on target. That will include things like power and you know, cooling and all these other factors. So let's apply that to Star Citizen. And, you know, this graph's kind of complicated, so we'll work through it, but this is not some existential crisis that Star Citizen is facing, right, with, with gimbals versus fixed. It's, it's a math problem and a relatively, you know, easily solved math problem. Um, if you look at this, you know, these two lines here, the blue one, um, I'll say is a size three fixed weapon. Uh, if you want to gimbal that same weapon, you're going to take a, a one size hit. And so this orange line would be the, you know, the size two equivalent. Um, so what this shows us is that a fixed loadout or, or fixed weapon that has a 40% time on target, uh, to have the equivalent damage output, a gimbaled loadout would have to have 60%, right? So a 50% increase. Now how you solve this problem is you find what the actual time on target is for fixed loadouts. Let's say it's 40%. Now, if the gimbaled time on target is something like 80%, then you would have that, you know, a, a two, a 100% weapon scaling between sizes. If it's only 50% better, you'd have 50%, you know, and, and where you basically would, would find gimbaled compared to fixed is where you would draw that line, uh, that slope. Uh, this graph also shows that at a certain point, gimbals can't get any better, right? So if the... Um, you know, if, if a fixed weapon is hitting, in this case, with a 50% weapon scaling, two-thirds of the time, uh, or better, uh, it's going to surpass gimbal output because gimbal does cannot increase its time on target past this point. In 2.6, we all know that things slow down, and that increases the time on target for both gimbaled and fixed. And, and this is the other side of the equation. Now, I think that the simplest solution is weapon size balancing. But on the other side of this equation... You know, there's something to be said for increasing joystick time on target. Things like slowing down the ships or giving a little bit of, you know, last centimeter aim assist to fix weapons are definitely going to do that. 
the last you know last inch assist or last half inch or whatever it's something I'm, I'm kind of a big proponent of i'd love to see something like 0.8 aiming but in conjunction with lag you know lag pips rather than just having it on top of the target uh, there's a huge problem with that last you know half inch or so of aiming with a stick on an xy plane and i think it's really frustrating for a lot of people and that small bump uh, would go a long way elite kind of does this but i think it's too easy and, and therefore too boring in elite which is why i think we need a little, a little bit of extra work or something from having to use uh, lag pips so the kicker to all this and the one thing that we can't you know ignore is that targeting computers and npc gunners are gonna be a thing in star citizen Balancing manual gimbal aim is the exact same problem we're inevitably going to have anyway. I say let's solve it now. Let's get the processes in place for maintaining that balance in place now by, you know, by CIG. Removing mouse control of gimbals from a pilot does not solve this problem. You know, CIG loves to give mixed loadouts as the default for pretty much every single ship in the game right now. It has a mixed loadout in terms of, you know, it has both gimbal and fixed weapon on it. Knowledgeable players, you know, experienced players will know that this is totally pointless in the game at the moment because you can't use multiple weapons at the same time effectively. But it's, you know, it's not my opinion that CIG is stupid and they don't understand this, right? They get it. They're building the game for its final version. And that will include things like target computers and NPC gunners, right? You'll have your heavy weapons, your slower hitting weapons, you know, fixed for slow targets. And then you'll have your, your gimbaled fast weapons for fighters or something. You know, that's all in the game. And that's all things, those are all things that we have to consider. So that's all the how, and, and how to make the balance work between gimbals and fixed loadouts. Here's the why. The first thing that I think of um, is how Star Citizen is a first person universe. Even now in the Crusader map, we're constantly getting in and out of our seats to, you know, to walk around landing zones, walk around ships inside of them, EVAing, get in gunfights in Korea, right? It's not every other space sim in, in you know, the history of space sims where you're in your ship, in your ship. You're part of your ship. You never leave that seat. There needs to be a unified control scheme to allow, you know, for this kind of transition between ship and, and, and first person. And mouse needs to be comfortable for those situations because not every person is going to want to be swapping out controllers every 10 minutes to do all these different things in the game or play all these different aspects of the game and that you know feeds into the second reason which is accessibility not everyone shares my vision of what star citizen should be but i like to see a breathing universe with millions of actual human players in it that lasts for a decade and i want you know i want the universe to feel like it matters and you don't get that when no one else is, is playing um you get that with large-scale fleet combat of player versus player you get that even in pve by having large player fleets go deep into you know vandal territory or something and the exploration and econ players you know are able to experience that too when they have these larger scale mining operations or maybe they're salvaging ships from an org versus org battle over an important station or they're selling their waypoint data to an actual person that's kind of the cool gameplay that you only get from having a lot of people we know that roughly three fourths of the players in the game right now, uh, even now, use mouse. So I've I've parsed and, and pulled down the the leaderboards uh, for squad battle this patch as of January 23rd, and I've collected the uh, input preferred input for the you know 10,500 or so players, uh, and just did a quick you know pie chart to show that roughly three fourths of of players in the game are using mouse. Now, in the general gaming population, outside of SC. There's not going to be, right, it's a much smaller percentage of players that even have uh, kind of advanced flight sim equipment. And, you know, in general, the flight sim market is, is a smaller one. If all of a sudden SC turns into something like Elite Dangerous, where not only does it cater to sim equipment, but you virtually require it to have an enjoyable experience in that game, SC really puts itself into a corner. And you're not going to see those kind of you know, massive number of people playing it with mouse um, that, you know, that that would be out there. It wouldn't even try it. And this leads kind of to the the final reason, and that's the um, the history behind SC and kind of the intent uh, of gimbals 
and the evolution of, of space sims. Um, it's always been clear to me, anyway, that the game rules have been, you know, a, a key feature of the game throughout its entire history. And looking at the Kickstarter video, the initial design of the Hornet, um, we have the, you know, ball turret with a 360 degree rotation range, and the in the canard turret with, you know, also gimbaled. Um, this is the initial design. This is the F7A, the single seat version of this of this fighter, and it's pretty clear to me what they were going for. Um, but we can actually see this explicitly stated when we look at quotes directly from Chris Roberts. Uh, you know, beginning way back, this is from, you know, over four years ago now, October 22nd, 2012. Um, we can tell that SC was never really meant to be a carbon copy of, of Space Sims from the 90s. So the question is, you know, how similar or different is the control scheme to Freelancer? And Chris answers that you know they'll fully support mouse like in Freelancer. It's pretty clear to me. Um, we'll go to an, a quote that's actually even earlier. This is from uh, September 24th, 2012. Another Chris Roberts answering questions on the site itself. Um, you know, how did the finished version of Freelancer differ from the original version? And uh, you know, what did they imagine that they they wanted to include but they couldn't get in there? Um, and the quote is, the final mouse controls, while get good, weren't the ones I saw in my head. I imagined the game being like an FPS, but in space and having the same level of shooting precision. What other game can you think of from the creator of Freelancer that has high shooting precision in space with kind of FPS-esque, FPS-esque, that's tough to say, controls? And here's another quote from Chris, from the, ask, from the Reddit uh, questionnaire. For me, it's what I dreamed I could do with Freelancer combined with how I would do another Wing Commander if I had the opportunity. He's explicitly drawing the line between Freelancer and Star Citizen as a combination of Freelancer and Wing Commander. Here's a quote uh, from when Point 8 came out, uh, June 2014, when we all started playing and you know, questions were popping up from, from players. Um, as for people thinking that gimbaled weapons spoil the skill in the game, gimbaled turret weapons are a mainstay of current military equipment, and will likely be even more so in the future. So now we see why you know he has these gimbals in the game from the beginning. That doesn't mean that a hit is automatic. The weapon still has to come to bear on the target. And you have to be pointing your ship's nose in such a way that the firing solution can be met. He he wants this to be a skill that players take on. He doesn't necessarily want it to be. Um, you know, like ED, where it's kind of auto-aim completely. And he even mentions freelancer mouse mode. Um, in that same document, he's also going to talk about how, you know, they're not going to emphasize roll over yaw, kind of like how he does. He's saying here that it's pure six degrees of freedom combat. This is the, you know, Evolution of space sims that's building from both Wing Commander and Freelancer. Explicitly, we know that. And he's given it an intuitive way to control your ship. That's what he means by FPS controls. It's not rolling and pitching like an aircraft. He doesn't want you to drag and lift your mouse around, you know, so you can't get in these turn fights. Combining aiming and flying is, is the most intuitive way and most effective way to do that. This is a new type of control method for a new type of space sim that he's built. And that's why I'm here, at least. Um, games like Free Space 2, those were amazing games, but it's not the 90s anymore. And, and those games in ED now, to me, feel so restrictive. SC shouldn't limit itself in that same way and just kind of come in a niche game that very few people play. Now, to be perfectly clear, none of what I said means that Mice should have an advantage over Stick. And you've may have been watching some of these duels in the background and it's it's obvious even in 2.6 parity is more than possible right at certain levels of the game it's been achieved we've seen it in 2.5 and 1.3 and 1.1.5 and you know 0.8 we'll see it in future versions of the game with auto turrets track ir hopefully minor aim assist um and you know better weapon balancing this can be a game that balances manual gimbal aim with fixed weapons rather easily. And I mentioned this in my first little rant video I did, but formulaic weapon scaling is the key here. Um, 
Now, CAG has kind of majorly compounded this problem by not directly addressing it in, you know, in the recent past and, and talking about how they can balance it. Their intentions can be interpreted by me to support Gimples, but you know, other people could see it another way. So I would love you know, to see CIG directly address this issue. Is IAM staying or going? Is manual you know, Gimbal aim staying, or is this something that they're going to get rid of? If it's staying, then the me methods by which Gimbal versus Fix can be balanced, like weapon scaling and these other mechanics, they should be carried through and, and kind of, you know, they should pay attention to these issues every patch. Um, and I guess that's kind of where I'll leave it. Hopefully we'll see CIG more actively discuss the balance for controllers without, you know, without killing off IM, which I think is you know, kind of an enjoyable and accessible control scheme. Um, I'd be disappointed if they got rid of it. Um, but, you know, I do have kind of larger cap ships and stuff to fall back on if single seat dogfighting, you know, gets kind of like stale. Uh, then I seriously worry, though, about your average player just never picking up SC. And that's a far cry from my hope of, you know, SC becoming the MMO that, that dominates the market for years and years. So I'll see you next time.